everyone. Um, welcome to uh, today's live Q&A with Keikai Kataki. Um, basically, before we begin the actual q and A, I'd like to go over a few points. Um, please make sure to enter your questions um, uh, in the actual questions and answers box that you guys uh, should have seen when you first logged in. Um, but beyond that, uh, just try to ask at least one question and give other people a chance to ask a question as well before you ask uh, multiple questions. Um, we're going to try to go in the order they're received, basically. Um, for those of you who have microphones, please let me know so that when I get to your question, basically, I can basically enable you to uh, use your mic to talk to KKI directly. Um, aside from that, uh, I'll just say start entering all your questions in now. Um, while I turn the screen over to Kai, who will give a basic introduction of who he is and everything for you guys, and um, hopefully you enjoy this Q&A. Um, Kai, if you're there, I'm switching over to you. Yep, I'm here. Okay, so, um, yeah. So you can start now with your basic introduction, sir. Uh, hello, people. Uh, my name is Kekai Kotaki, and this is my live Q&A session of my workshop. Um... You guys don't know what I look like. This is uh, this is me right here. Um, I am concept art lead at Arena Arena Net, working on uh, Guild Wars Two. Um, I also have um, I'm also an illustrator on the side. I do various novel covers uh, and other uh, different games such as uh, Magic the Gathering uh, and some other stuff. But uh, uh, yeah. Other than that, that's, uh, that's me, in a, me in a nutshell. I mean, not much to it. There's a, some of the stuff I've I've done before, various concepts and illustrations. But yeah, I've been working at Reinet for almost seven years now. I first got started as a texture artist at Reinet. That was my first little gig over there. Uh, Louis Lolo. I painted the ground, painted rocks and stuff. So, uh, not maybe not the greatest thing in the world, but no, it was a job, and you know, I was in a it was in a video game company, and I was making games. So I was I was quite happy. Um, but slowly but surely, I, you know, drawing textures and drawing rocks and dirt and grass was not, you know, the end all thing I was hoping for. So, you know, just uh, worked hard, kept at it, and, you know, gradually progressed my way to being a concept artist. So, I think it was, uh, I believe, in Guild Wars Factions, I did my first concepts, but I was still doing terrain stuff. Um, Nightfall, I believe, is when I really became... Uh, a concept artist, uh, per se. That's, all, that's pretty much all I did. Um, and then I in the North, I was a concept artist. And then finally, when we're in the very, almost the very beginning of Guild, of Guild Wars 2 production, I was able to uh, come on as a concept art lead. So during that time period, um, I slowly, I, most of that, most of that time, I spent really just focusing on concept art, um, focusing on it, and you know, getting better, honing my skills, and stuff, stuff like that. Didn't quite focus doing freelance at that point. I did some stuff very early on. I did some illustrations for snowboards for K2, and some other smaller. Uh, some warring companies, but after that, after I got my got, after I got my uh, gig, I basically just focused on concept art and video game art. Um, it wasn't until like recently where I actually started doing a lot of illustration on the side and freelancing stuff. So, okay, okay, Kai. Um, we have a few questions that actually did. Awesome. Out. Ask away. Um, but I saw the first uh, a, a, a really interesting question from a Karen Kotaki, I believe. Uh, oh. Hi, mom. How are you doing? <laughs> she would like to know what was your main source for inspiration for your artwork. Oh, this is a very funny story, mom. Actually, yes, my mom's listening on top of it. 
Hi, Mom. Love you. Glad you're watching. <laughs> Thank um, you, Gary. Uh, well, actually, you know what? what was the big inspiration for me for getting into fantasy art was actually you. Because way back in the day, remember, you used to read a lot of books back in the day, right? So you used to go to the library and pick up, like, stacks of books, right? Now, half the stacks of books were those, uh, you know, those dying romance novels, right? So I would never ever read that. But then the other half of the stack was all these fantasy novels. And that's where I actually got started, where I'm like, I started reading these fantasy novels, and they were so awesome. And that's basically where all my um, inspiration, and that's where I wanted to do my art and stuff really came in. Because basically reading those stories and imagining it, you know, I really just wanted to uh, convey that feeling. And, you know, the stuff I draw, the, the fantasy Im imagery that I draw are basically like, seeing that stuff and then uh, really just putting it down so people can see it. So, Wow, that's awesome actually. Uh, great source of inspiration. Thanks. Go mom. Uh, uh, we're going to move on to a question from John Forcucci, I believe. This is how you pronounce his name. Um, John doesn't have a mic, but his question is, you mentioned converting to 300 DPI for print. At what point in the process? Uh, usually, well, that depends. I mean, uh, first off, I mean, uh, well, I mean, this is like right here, right? And usually, like, you know, converting to 300 DPI, um, you, you know, that's for print. So basically what happens is, like, you know, towards the end, like say like maybe the three quarters of the way when it's just like when I'm putting on like really the really like a uh, tight finish, I would switch it to uh, 300 dpi. It would basically be like you know. Okay. All right. Which is basically like that. So I mean, and then that's what happens. So, <laughs> and then I'll just save this and turn that in. So you do this prior to the finalizing of the actual piece, or yeah, it's either either before I finalize it, or if I just space out before I before I send it off, I'll just resize it, the file, and then just says and then just send that. Right. So it really is just <laughs> toward it toward it's towards the end. Okay. Um, our next question is going to come from uh, Michael Yantis, I believe, Marino. Um, Mike actually does have a microphone, so Mike, if you're there, can you say hello? Hi. Uh, I have a question. Uh, we can't hear you. Can you speak closer to your microphone? Yeah, sure. Uh, my question is, uh, okay. when you begin to paint you. You use a brush with random shapes, with a, which which are active in the options menu of the brush palette. Why? Well, what options? Okay, uh, I'm gonna repeat the question he asked again for those who didn't hear it. Um, he says his question is: When you begin to paint, you use a brush with random shapes, which are active in the options menu of the brushes palette. Wait, Oh, okay. That okay. Um, that is dual brush. So basically, what happens is, so this is my regular brush. This is the brush I use all the time, right? So when you go to dual brush, which is right here, right? It basically overlays. It takes the alpha and it basically overlays it into the your current brush. So basically, what happens is, I still have I still have that shape, right? But now there's a different brush in there. And basically it's this brush right here. So if I, so what I'll do right now is I'll find that brush. So this is the regular brush, right? This is the brush that's overlaid into this. So this, so this brush here is in there. So what, ha what what happens in dual brush is that you can control how that how the second brush interacts with it by using diameter spacing and scatter. Um, so spacing is like you know it's just like it, if you 